Hello again, Steve Fentress on behalf of the Strassenburg Planetarium at the Rochester Museum and Science Center with things to watch for in the sky for the week beginning May 7th. And we have our Stellarium software set for the evening of Thursday, May 7th, about 10 minutes till 9. That's half an hour after sunset. Venus really bright. We'll get to that in a moment. The brightest star in the night sky, Sirius, is very low and won't be visible in our evening sky much longer. And we're also saying goodbye to Betelgeuse, the bright reddish star in the shoulder of the constellation Orion. And Orion is coming to the end of his long season. So those three stars in Orion's belt will be visible with difficulty just after sunset for another few days. Then Orion will be hidden by the glare of the sun for a few weeks and we'll see him again in the morning sky just before sunrise starting at the end of July. Let's look over toward the east on the evening of May 7th, just as the sun is setting. There's the full moon coming up. Maybe there will be clouds, but if there's even a chance of a break in the clouds, keep an eye out for that. After May 7th, the moon will be past its full phase and rising later every night. Let's look back over toward the west. And let's skip forward one day at a time, keeping the time of day frozen at half an hour after sunset. And we're going to go forward to May 14th. That's a week. And you'll see that by a week from now, by May 14th, half an hour after sunset, Orion's belt is definitely gone. Venus is much lower. Sirius almost invisible. Venus is going into the part of its orbit where it rapidly passes between us and the sun, and it will soon disappear too. Well, let's keep our time at May 14th and let the Earth rotate so the sun sets and the stars begin to come out. Look for that giant archway of spring stars, Procyon and Pollux and Capella and Castor. Well, Castor is the one next to Pollux. Four bright stars making a huge arch in the west every year in the spring just after sunset. Let's swing around a bit to the south and crane our necks to look way up high just after dark in spring for famous spring star groups. Look up there at the top of the screen. There it is, the Big Dipper. Four stars for the cup where you put the water or whatever, and three stars for the curved handle. Part of the giant constellation Ursa Major, according to star charts. And then if you imagine water dripping out of the bottom of the cup of the Dipper, it lands on the back of Leo the Lion with a backward question mark, also called the sickle, outlining the back of the lion's head and his mane, and a triangle pointing to the lion's tail. The Big Dipper and Leo are always together in the sky, and spring evenings is when they're up high. The handle of the Dipper is curved. Follow the arc to Arcturus, very bright, beautiful orange star, high in the sky at nightfall in springtime. After you follow the arc to Arcturus, sail on to Spica, a bluish white star. Now one of my favorite things to watch for in the spring sky. Between the Big Dipper and Leo, three pairs of stars close together. If you are interested in the names, they're Talitha or Denoses and Alcaphra, and then Tanya Borealis and Tanya Australis, and Alula Borealis and Alula Australis. There's an old Arabic tradition that calls these the three leaps of the gazelle. And I love the idea that somebody had that poetic imagination to look up at the sky and imagine the tracks of an animal bounding across the sky between the stars. So the three leaps of the gazelle always between the Big Dipper and Leo and up high just after dark every year in spring. Let's see what else is going on. We look over toward the east. It's a little after 10 o'clock now. There's summertime's brightest star, Vega, coming up, and another bright one, Deneb. Put those together with the star Altair, and you have the summer triangle. And I'm zooming in with the software here to try to convey the idea that the summer triangle is really big. Covers a big expanse of sky. 
Scan with your binoculars through the middle of the summer triangle. If you have binoculars, you're looking into one of the densest parts of the Milky Way. Many beautiful little groups of stars to find in there. Let's check out the northern sky. There down at the bottom, the W of the constellation Cassiopeia. And we look up high. It's about one o'clock in the morning now. There's the Big Dipper. And always, the last two stars in the cup of the Dipper point to a star that stays in the same place. Polaris, our North Star, end of the handle of the Little Dipper. And everything there is going in a circle because we live on a planet that is rotating every 24 hours but we feel as if we're sitting still, so it looks as if the sky is going around us. Now, about two o'clock in the morning, up late, coming home from work, going to work, can't sleep, bright things to see in that southeastern sky in the wee hours of the morning in May 2020. The planet Jupiter. If you have a small telescope, this is a really good thing to try it out on because the moons of Jupiter are easy to see Saturn is famous for its rings. That's a little harder. You need higher magnification, good atmospheric conditions. The moon Titan and the moon Rhea are often visible next to Saturn. And curb your enthusiasm about how good Mars will ever look through a telescope. We will get closer to Mars than usual this fall, but even then it's a hard planet to see well through a telescope. And early in the morning on May 14th, the moon will be at its last quarter phase. And when the moon is at its last quarter phase, it rises in the middle of the night. I love looking at it because at that time it's late afternoon on the moon while it's early morning for me here. Kind of a strange coincidence of times to think about. Also coming up in the wee hours of the morning, a group of stars that in on star charts is part of the constellation Sagittarius, but it's much easier to see a teapot. There was the spout, the lid, the handle of the teapot. And if you have a pair of binoculars, and binoculars are better for this than a telescope, scan that region around the scout of the teapot. You're looking toward the center of our galaxy. You're looking past a lot of stars, many beautiful star clusters and nebulas that binoculars can see around the spout of the teapot, which is coming up in the early morning sky in the southeast, along with those planets, Saturn, Jupiter, and on the morning of May 14th, the last quarter moon. Let's put time into fast forward and wait for dawn. We're at a time of year where sunrise is coming a couple of minutes earlier every day, just as sunset is coming a couple of minutes later every day and the direction of sunrise is moving north every day. So you'll see the sun rising quite a bit north of east, bringing night to an end. So that's a look at things in our sky for the week of May 7th to 14th. Thank you so much for watching.